Hi, my name is Jason Gilmore, and I'm the CTO of Dream Factory. The first video in this series introduced you to Dream Factory's database API generation capabilities. You learned how to generate a MySQL API, learn more about the API through the auto-generated Swagger documentation, and then perform secure API calls from outside of Dream Factory using an HTTP client such as Insomnia or Postman. Now these capabilities alone can completely transform your organization's capacity to build, test, and launch applications. However, they really only scratch the surface in terms of Dream Factory's capabilities. In this video, I'll introduce you to one particularly powerful feature known as Data Mesh. Data Mesh allows you to combine data residing in multiple databases into a single response by way of a single API call. What's more, you're not restricted to merging data hailing from a specific vendor, meaning that while you could combine data residing in two different databases of the same vendor, such as Postgres, you could also do the same with data residing in, for instance, an IBM DB2 and a MySQL database, or a Microsoft SQL Server and Oracle database. Further, this capability is cloud agnostic, meaning these databases could reside in two entirely different networks or cloud environments. In this video, I'll show you how to configure Data Mesh and demonstrate combining data residing in an IBM DB2 database running on IBM Cloud and a MySQL database running on Amazon RDS. To begin using Data Mesh, you'll first need to generate APIs for the desired databases within your Dream Factory environment. This process is covered in the introductory video, so I won't rehash those steps here. Once your API is configured, you can inspect Dream Factory's understanding of the schema within the Schema tab. In this demonstration, I'll show you how to interconnect an IBM DB2 database with a MySQL database. The DB2 data will be incorporated into a MySQL API call, meaning I'll create the virtual relationship within the MySQL schema interface. To do so, I'll select MySQL as the service and then choose the Employees table. Now, before we go any further, I want to show you what the default Employees table output looks like. To do so, I'll jump over to the Insomnia HTTP client and submit a GET request to the employees table. So I'll go ahead and press send. And as you can see, six fields are returned. Now that you know what the default output looks like, let's return to Dream Factory. With the MySQL service and employees table chosen, you'll see that the employee's table definition is displayed on the right side of the screen. Dream Factory presents a breakdown of the table fields, field types, constraints, and the foreign key relationships, which are presented here. To create a virtual relationship between this table and a table residing in another database, in our case DB2, you'll click the Add Virtual Relationship button. And it's here within this interface where we're going to define that relationship. So I'll start by enabling Always Fetch, meaning every time we make a call to that, a GET request, I should say, to that employees table, we're also going to bring in the DB2 data. Next up, I'm going to declare this to be a Has Many Relationship because this example will demonstrate how each employee in the MySQL employees table can be associated with many status messages residing in the IBM DB2 employee status table. This is a virtual relationship, so it's already checked. Here, we're going to declare the primary key within the employees table, or the, I should say the key that we want to associate with a field residing in the other table. In this case, it is going to be the primary key for the employees table, which is EMP underscore NO. 
And then we're going to choose the reference service. And that's going to be DB2. Next, we're going to choose the reference table within that reference service, which is the employee status table. Finally, we're going to choose the reference field residing within the employee status field. So this will be the foreign key, and that is employee ID. Now, with those changes in place, you actually could press save and, and proceed to use data mesh. However, I want to show you one more feature which is available by scrolling up to the top. Now, Dream Factory will by default set an alias for you, which can be used as a parameter when uh, making a data mesh call on demand. And I should say, in addition to that, this alias will be used within the response output to house the, the data residing in this other relationship. So I've called it status history. And with that complete, I'll scroll down to the bottom and press save. Once saved, you'll be returned to the employee's schema screen. And here, you'll note the new virtual relationship. If we return to Insomnia, or your HTTP client, and request the employee's endpoint again, this time you'll see that the DB2 data has been included alongside those employee records having a relationship. Hopefully this brief introduction to Data Mesh got your mind racing regarding the possibilities. However, I promise you that this really only is the beginning in terms of what you can do. For instance, you're not limited to combining just two databases. By creating additional virtual relationships, you're able to combine three or even more databases together into a single call. You could also use Dream Factory's scripting capabilities to transform that combined data into any desired response format. You could also pull data from one database and insert it into another as part of an API call. If you'd like to learn more about Dream Factory, I invite you to check out our user's guide at guide.dreamfactory.com or better, schedule some one-on-one -on -one time with a member of our team by contacting sales at dreamfactory.com.